question is, do you agree that Scotland should be an independent country? For me, the principle that we work best when we work together. Well, they didn't. Very serious. The referendum. It seems to me that they're not dealing with the issues. Hi. The Scottish Independence Podcast is your chance to hear some different views on what the independence referendum means for Scotland. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Scottish Independence Podcast, which I'm sorry to say that this one will be our last. It's with sadness that I have to announce that the project is over. It's a decision that's been come to not without a lot of soul searching and I'll I'll give you my thoughts on it later, but uh, we also consulted our contributors about it and some of them were firmly in agreement with their uh, reasons for doing it. So um, I think because it's a decision not just with the future in mind, but also with history in mind, uh, the first person I'll let you have a listen to is one of our contributors, Craig Gallagher, who firmly agreed with our decision to end the podcast, and here's his reason why. Yeah, the big thing for me, you know, I've supported independence for a long time, but I have to say thank you to the Better Together campaign because they, they pointed out to me you know, I'd never known this. I'd studied the history of Scotland since for most of my adult life. But they told me, and they, they were, they were, and hence it was obvious, they were right, that Scotland was extinguished in 1707 by, by the Union. And, you know, it makes perfect sense when you look at around us. You know, there's, there's the British flag. You know, it doesn't have a saltire on there. I mean, it's got a wee white line, but let's be honest, it's a different flag. And then the name, you know, the name, it's a United Kingdom. It's one kingdom. I mean, it makes sense. There's only one of them, you know. And 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 just when I started thinking about it, I realised it's, it's obviously true. Um, you know, I mean, my grocer, right? He he's he's English, so clearly, you know, it's not it's not Scotland. Dude. There's an English guy there. So anyway, that's why I'm voting no. Scotland was extinguished, and uh, well, there's nothing to become independent, is there? Before I have another little word with you, I'll just go straight to another one of our contributors, who was Doug Daniel, who was in one of our earlier episodes, and I'll let you hear what he has to say on the matter. Well, Michael, as I said when I was on last time, I've always been in favour of independence, but that was before I knew the truth. Did you know that it's not independence we'd be voting for at all? It's separation. Separation, Michael. We're going to be separate. Now, I don't actually know what that means, but it sounds scary, and I don't like scary things. I know this is true, because Jackie Bailey keeps calling it that, and Jackie Bailey would never tell a lie. I'll tell you this, I did not get into this for Scotland to become separate. Nothing good can ever come from separation. I mean, just look at eggs. You can use eggs to make a nice omelette with cheese and bacon in it. But if you separate the yolk from the white, you get a meringue. Am I right? Now, I don't know if you've ever tried putting cheese and bacon into a meringue, Michael, but it's absolutely disgusting. So that's why I'm voting no in 2014. So there you have it. That's why we have to stop. The Better Together campaign's just been so convincing that that's the way it's got to be. They've been so good that even... People like environmental scientists have been convinced that. Here's Rebecca McKinley. Hello, my name's Rebecca McKinley. I'm an environmental scientist and I will definitely be voting no in 2014. You see, an independent Scotland would be against nature. All the evidence to date suggests that the Scots, if they were left to their own devices, would waste valuable resources on welfare for the sick and the weak and the elderly, when these people should be left to the forces of natural selection. The laws of nature are quite clear. We'd be far better together with a sensible government that will make these people fight in the streets like the dogs they are. That's why I'm saying UK OK. Vote no in 2014 and we can keep the Tories in power forever. Every time you look at it, it just gets worse. I mean, the Better Together campaign's even reached Zambia. Here's uh, Keith Waddle speaking from there. It was watching Reporting Scotland on the 25th of September 2012 that really clinched it for me. 
is not just the Royal Jubilee or the London Olympics or the renewal of Trident or even the One Nation speech. It was not the fear of being thrown out of the EU and then forced to join the Euro that finalised my decision. Though incrementally, all these have played their part. But in replaying the political journey I've been travelling since the inauguration of the Better Together's No campaign, I had, by the end of September, reached critical mass. The evidence by then was really crystal clear. All doubts and uncertainty had finally melted, especially with that cogent and persuasive argument by our hopefully-to-be dame-in-waiting, Joanne Lamont, for the dismantling of the Scottish Universalist Welfare State. Her Something for Nothing Society speech and her attack on workshy benefit scroungers, parasitic pensioners, and the so-called disabled malingerers and indolent students, that was a defining moment and a rush of reason to the latent conservative and unionist that had been lying dormant inside me. A return to the more traditional selective charity doctrine and the abolition of free education, health and transport services, they, this is an unanswerable case to all those peddling their universalist and separatist welfare agendas. The free provision of these services fails to take into account the inconsequentiality, the indigence and imprudence of over 80% of Scottish society. It's now clear that these provisions are an unnecessary extravagance and nothing more than electoral bribes and nationalist freebies. The No campaign with its sound economics grounded in Westminster's Green Book, the bedroom tax, PFIs, austerity and financial incentives for the banking sector have all deepened my convictions and given me a fresh confidence in internalising the benefits of unionism and the dangers of separation. So you can hear this has been a very difficult decision for everyone and nothing that um, anyone has taken lightly. It even moved Andrew to poetry. Nay, mayor, will our bonny callants merch to war when o braggarts cruisly craw, nor we wains frae pit heed and clachen mourn the ships sailing down the broomilaw. Broken families in lands we've Harriet will curse Scotland the brave, nay, mayor, nay, mayor. Black in white, ain till ither merit, mak the vile barracks o' their maesters bear. What a dismal vista. Recently, the Tory Defence Minister has been in Glasgow, and he made a point which really hit home with me. His argument was simple. What would become of the warlike Scotchman if Scotland became independent? Would these berserker spirits spill onto our street? What would these soldiers do for war? Whom would they bomb, and where, and how? What guns would they have? What aeroplanes? Would we be reduced to muskets and bayonets, with nary the technology to harry a small, medium-sized, perhaps, Middle Eastern country, if our politicians decided such were a diverting pastime? Imagine the image, the dolorous picture, of the berserker soldier the soldier boy in the recruiting sergeant's room in independent Scotland. Listen, lad, there's no wars here, no future for you in the Scottish army. When I saw that the Scottish Nationalist Party had reversed its position on NATO and there may be some small conflict for an independent Scotland to get involved in, sending its troops to far-flung territories, I was slightly encouraged. But where's the guarantees that Scotland would continue to be able to send our brave boys to die and cause others to die abroad? So with a heavy heart, despite the nationalism which has been in my family for four generations, I've come to the view that you can 
vote for Scottish independence for many reasons. The SNP recently asked us to vote for Scottish independence for our children. You might vote for independence for our poorer fellow citizens, whose benefits are being ravaged by a Westminster government insensible to their plights, indifferent to their predicament. You might vote for independence for them. But not me. No, I see the face of that young soldier boy outside the recruiting sergeant's office in independent Scotland, his eyes dull, his heart beating with nary a flutter at the prospect of some small-scale peacekeeping endeavour, without decent military hardware to rain death from the skies, with hardly a silo of missiles to the country's name, with no nuclear deterrent to deter uh, whichever foe the fierce British people need next deal with. I look into that disappointed soldier's eyes, and I say, vote no. We are better together. An extraordinary thing is that in a campaign that doesn't seem to have so much going on at grassroots level, they've been absolutely amazing. They've even affected people on the terraces. And here's uh, Chris Kuyava to explain that. We're better together. Yeah, I've said it. There's no use denying it, we are. You may think I'm only saying that as a fan of one of Scotland's big clubs who are always talking about leaving Scotland and playing elsewhere anyway, but it's not just a war of the English Premier League that's important here. Independence is just wrong for Scotland. I mean, who'd run it? The SNP? Don't make me laugh. No, there's a better way. The Liberal Democrat way. Scotland as part of a federal United Kingdom just makes sense. That way Scotland can deal with all the local issues in Scotland, just as the English and the Welsh and the Northern Irish can deal with their own local issues too. Local parliaments for local issues, that's the way to go. Basically the stuff the others can't be bothered with and don't think are important anyway. Meanwhile, all the big important decisions can still be made by the proper UK government, and we can just do as we're told, eh, I mean, be part of a wider coalition of governments. It's the Lib Dem way, it's the future. Their campaigning's been so effective that they've even reached people that have been campaigning down on the grassroots level every day and uh, someone who was a former member of the parliament who was in a party that supported independence and has supported independence since she was a very, very young age. I'll let Carolyn Leckie explain because you have to hear it. You might know that I've been doing a few things recently, like for Women for Independence and Yes, Isco Bride had a launch and I did a meeting in Edinburgh that uh, Engender had organised, which was a debate in favour of independence with a woman for Better Together who was very nice, she was very good. It's made me think about why I support independence because I've supported independence for so long, since I was about 11, and I just think most it's mostly instinctive it's mostly something that I've just always believed. So I thought, if I'm challenging other people to think about independence when they've maybe naturally and inherently supported the union, then I should really challenge my own thinking. I just think because we've been controlled by London for so long that maybe we need to take a wee bit more time to think about it because all of the best brains and resources and everything have been sucked into London and I don't know that if we I don't know that we can immediately go independent overnight and maybe we need to take some more time to think about other options. Maybe we're just a bit too stupid, like some of people have been saying. And um, the other thing that struck me that resonated with me was that from a feminist perspective, which is a similar argument to what I've heard on the left before about, you know, socialists, we should all unite, we don't want any, you know, what about, you get married in common, we working class people in Liverpool, Manchester, Newcastle. Well, I've heard uh, arguments from feminists as well about not abandoning our sisters in England. And then I'm thinking, maybe I'll be a bit responsible for that. And sort of think about it. Why, why not try and expand unity across Europe? Maybe we could have a federal Europe. Maybe we could have a federal world. In fact, and so these kinds of things have got me thinking. I wouldn't say that I'm definitely not voting yes, but I'm considering looking at other options. So you can see there, there's actually some kind of solidarity argument going on there. 
It's kind of convincing. And um, Robin McAlpine was... Um